everybody look natural. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to a special episode of Retire Holics. Why do I call it special? Because we're gonna do a bit of a product review. We're gonna do it in a Q&A type of fashion. And we have a guest with us from FI360, Dave Palasak. David or Dave? What do you prefer? Dave. 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 Got it, Dave. Stick so with mo it. Most of this is going to be David explaining to us. We go straight to David. I go David. That was pretty rude. You can't. He just. <laughs> <laughs> it's most like my this is going to be Dave explaining to us about the ins and outs of this product. Um, but even though it is a special episode, and even though we're doing a product review, it still is retire holics. It's still and that the means morning time. It's still we must ten o'clock. <laughs> The BOE, the beer of the episode. Everybody listen. And today we are having Captain Fatty's. <laughs> GD, where is Captain <laughs> Fatty's made? I have no idea. Jeez, it Tell says us right on the side. Yeah. Goleta, California. Goleta. Hmm. Goleta? Yes. Where's Goleta, that? California. It's up by you guys. Wow, it's a, it's it's a Pilsner. Kind of it's a beach oh, really? beer. I think so. <laughs> Pretty sure. I don't think Another GD specialty. So it's a if, beach beer. If called, Show Pilsner, editor if it, of where If it's Goleta called Captain is. Fatty's, which retire holic is it named after? I don't <laughs> oh, know. God. <laughs> Vote at the, at the bottom. <laughs> you stand don't. up, stand sideways. No, nope, not doing it. This is even a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. It's actually very good. It's the good. winner of the ASPA taco it's eating on. contest, right? Captain Fatty's. I'm Check surprised you enjoy this. What's that? Kate, Kate surprise you, you enjoy score it. the spear? I, yes, I will give it a <laughs> give it a retire four sips. score on a one to five. No, give it an FI 360 score between zero and hundred. I'm going to go with like a remember zero is the best. Zero is the best. I'm going to go like a six point eight. Wow. Actually, if it's between zero and hundred, I'm going to go like a twenty six point two. There you wow. go. Twenty six. So it didn't meet your twenty five percent on the watch list. It didn't get in the top twenty five percent quartile. No. It's not on the mm. watch list. It would remain Depends on, the core on what menu. kind of methodology you're using. Okay, fair enough. Hey, I will say this. All right, yeah. let's jump right into this, shall we? Because you guys' banter is boring me. <laughs> Dave, tell us, what is FI360? Who's it for? Give us an understanding of this, this product you guys got. FI360 at its heart right, is about helping advisors follow a fiduciary process. And that's not only when the advisor is acting as a fiduciary, but it's when they're working with fiduciaries such as uh, retirement plan committee members or other trustees. And our organization is really about how we can train or provide education to those advisors and then how can we equip them with the right technology or tools or processes to uh, more efficiently execute uh, their practice. Kind of give us you know, the history of it all, where, where it all started, where it came from. So FI360 was really started in 1999, and back then it was really focused just on our training, our education. And in 2003, we actually started our first software product. It was really just a one-page profile that gave an advisor kind of a quick due diligence evaluation of, of a fund. And really since 2003, we uh, introduced our toolkit in 2008, and uh, just introduced a new software in 2016, the Fiduciary Focus Toolkit. Again, the essence of the software is helping advisors follow that fiduciary process that, that, that we teach. Right? It's not necessarily helping with every single step of the process, but those parts that were either uh, most time consuming or most difficult to do on the advisor's uh, kind of own self, they can now look to us and, and the software to really help make that more uh, operational in their business. Give, give us a real quick understanding. If you, <clears throat> you have tools for advisors who are fiduciaries on the upfront, and then you have the, the software, which is primarily in terms of usage, is a, is a toolkit, right? Is an investment review product. That's correct. Yeah, so there's really three aspects of the, of the software, if you will, in terms of how, how we help advisors. One is really helping them win new business. So, so how do we In the let prospecting you, right? and sales, they're going to use it, yep. Keep Absolutely. going, yep. Absolutely. So, so how do you take a, a prospect that comes in the door, and compare their, their current lineup or their right. current plan or, or their current account if, you're, if it's a wealth account, right? We're not just retirement uh, only. But how can you take that, compare it against your proposed menu to hopefully you know, win, win a new plan? So that's a, a key aspect not of Not only the are you showing them that the, the grass is potentially greener, that you've got this, this better menu you thought out, but you're also at the same time showing them Check out my ongoing process, right? Yeah. I'm going to be able to do this for the next year and the next five years and the next 10 years. And that's exactly cool. what happens, right? You're able to take our kind of proposal system and work that into then the ongoing client monitoring report. And that's really where we can help showcase, especially when you're working with a 401k plan or other fiduciary, 
Um, it's not just helping you follow a fiduciary process, but you're able to use the monitoring tools to help that plan sponsor or committee um, also ensure that they're meeting their fiduciary obligations. So tell us a little bit more about how many people are using like, the tools thing, that you have. Is it, is you're successful? putting on a major conference. There's a lot of people here and good folks targeted. Give us more because I know there's not. these aren't the only people using it. Absolutely. So in terms of our kind of broad user base, we have over 11,000 designees. Um, and in terms of our software, uh, just as a, a few metrics for you. One is we have over 4,000 users using the software. And again, as, as I said before, it's really not just 401k centric. That's probably 70, 75% of our user base is using it for 401k plans. Um, but we have wealth only advisors using sure. it. And we have a lot that have both 401k and wealth that are, are using the software. And in terms of usage, you could look at uh, monitoring reports as, as a good kind of proxy for that. So how many, how many regular monitoring reports are being produced out of our system every year. And right now we're, we're over 40,000 uh, plans or accounts that are being monitored using the fiduciary process. Wow. Jeez, From my personal that. experience, yeah. I've, I've kind of seen FI360 grow in my career and, and uh, to have over 11,000 and have it be such a reputable brand today, it's been quick growth for me. Like it's, you guys have come a long way. Well, and it, it came to our attention because our financial advisor on our 401k plan was using that methodology as he came that's in and hosted point. our future reviews. <laughs> that's a good point. And that's kind of yeah. how we initially Love saw it. But, and, and I think it's good, as you mentioned, the toolkit and the monitoring reports. In my mind, as I've talked with many advisors over the years, I see the toolkit as a scalability piece of their business. Absolutely. You have lots of clients, you have lots of 401k clients, private wealth clients. You need to have one methodology that you're reviewing the investments with so that you can send out a singular quarterly report with the same methodology and not feel like you need to prepare with eight different advisors' reports or eight different record keepers' reports. And I imagine that's probably a big part of the hat you all put on when you're bringing advisors on is making sure they see how this can scale their book for them. Right. Is that a value you guys oh. are cognizant of? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So back, back to the process, obviously all process sometimes can make things more lengthy or, or more difficult potentially. So a lot of the goal of the software is to help the advisors do that with more of their, with more of their business, not only 401k plans, but yeah. other accounts. So that's not going to happen unless that's efficient, unless we can help them be, be more efficient. So that's, that's absolutely a goal. And one of our focuses uh, really this year too has been, uh, not only this year, but uh, the last few years has been focusing on integrations and not only with other record keepers right. and custodians, right. but other software vendors where we can to make that uh, hmm. process more efficient for, for, for the advisors and their staff that are, that are using the tools. Are the, the end user, once you deliver that report, the client, I imagine they're seeing quite a bit of value in receiving this from an advisor, an advisor having access to these tools too. Absolutely, and I think the, one of the key aspects of FI360 and, and our score in particular is that it is pretty simple, um, simple to see from a client standpoint, but it does have the kind of backing of that fiduciary process uh, underpinning it. So you're able to use it kind of as your minimum fiduciary uh, screen, but it's also something that your clients can pretty easily resonate with, right. which it's usually those two things don't go hand in hand. Striking a balance between creating something that's palatable for plan sponsors that don't want to be just beat over the head with tons of analytics and metrics and things, but right. beneath it is a very sophisticated, prudent process that has all those things. Right. That's definitely how I've experienced. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate for clarity purposes, I totally agree with both of you guys. I think that when you look at a plan advisor and their current you know, um, operations, they need to prepare for these client meetings throughout the year. And if they have a decent book, I mean, even if you get to 10 plans and then 20 and then 40 and 50 and it just becomes more and more magnified, you want to be able to prepare for those meetings quickly, efficiently. You want to be knowledgeable about the methodology that you're endorsing with your clients. There are so many positives to having one system yeah. to do that as opposed to trying to use record keeper A's and record sure. keeper D's and record keeper C and run, what a nightmare. Yeah. So such Absolutely. a huge value. What's next? You actually just kind of told me and I, I want to dive a little more into that. So, sure. um, but, I, but share with me some other things as well. What do you see for the future of FI360? How does this product be enhanced? One that I'm really interested in is tying to the record keepers. Is that what you just told me? You're, yes. you're going to get data from them for your advisors so they don't have to insert, what, pl like plan assets and participant yep. counts, those types of things? Historically, if you go back five, six years, you know, the way to get data in the system was generally you're manually entering mm -hmm. it or you're, you're uploading an Excel file with, you know, client 
funds and sure. balances. And you know, that works okay if you have a small amount of plans, but once you, once you grow that base or you're doing it more regularly, that can be a, a real drag. So that was really the, one of the most time consuming elements of the software. Yeah. And if you combine that with also a need for more of a book of business type view, not only for, for an advisor, but for larger organizations that have multiple advisors. Sure. That kind of uh, aggregated uh, view is also uh, was a desire. So, so we've been working on uh, adding more and more integrations, both at a record keeper level, so going to someone like a, an American Funds or an Empower or a Census, um, but they're also working with custodians where if you're using a independent TPA or, or someone else and you're custodying at Schwab or, or TD or Matrix or Mid-Atlantic, um, that we're able to pull hmm. uh, the plan data in, which will facilitate all the kind of initial creation of all the client accounts or plan accounts, and then it will continue to update uh, the information that's as you move awesome. forward. Oh, you guys are doing question. this all automatically? It's not something that's triggered by the advisor if they want it, you guys just do it, or? There's a basic sign-up process for, for the advisor to okay. begin with with the, given, uh, with the given vendor. It's usually some type of authorization so they can send information to FI360. Mm -hmm. They can release the plan data to FI360. Okay. But that's usually simple form. There's no, there's no cost for it for the advisor, so it's something that's just part of our Solution. Yeah, so now, now in, a future, in a future perfect world, you know, if I have 50 plans across a variety of record keepers, I just go to my FI360 hub and it's all there for me, updated, I don't know, quarterly or I don't, I don't know uh, what. But generally monthly. Some, monthly, oh damn, we're some do it plans that are quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Now most but, of the plan monitoring reports are quarterly, okay. but the uh, investment data does update. Yeah, but the, the, the plan sponsor data. Oh, that's very, very, very cool. So th as far as integrations, that's the one main focus there. But as far as other two, two other areas that we're really working towards um, from a product standpoint are uh, more reporting on model portfolios, whether that's just a, a asset allocation service that you have as part of your plan menu or whether you're actually offering more of a, a 338 model where you are unitizing it or actually taking on the investment management responsibility. So mm -hmm. the more we can do to provide reporting on that that the advisor can use to monitor the models and also... Wow. <laughs> Have fun with that, Brandon. I, was I think, trying to I think that's that a retire Alex first. <laughs> that is. I'm imagining some that's great edited here. graphic with that. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you, you see, it's, you must or if you're building it, advisors yeah. calling for that kind of model portfolio reporting from you guys? Yeah, we have a, actually a pretty good amount that... Um, have, have requested it or, or the need both for that asset allocation service model where it's not really a, uh, you're not taking on the investment management through 338 duty to build a model, but it's just a pre-allocated yeah. percentage of the plan menu. Um, that's been the majority, but, but how do you show that to the plan sponsor, committee members, or even to a participant to better evaluate yeah. what, what the models are and how well they performed? is something that we are getting nice. a lot of requests for. So we're at the point, let's take some questions from the audience. We, y yeah. That guy, front row. <laughs> Who is that guy? Wow. Um, I need to know, I like to use active and passive investments in my lineups, and I need to know if there's a way that I can mess with the methodology so that I could give a different report to people. Sure. So as, as part of the IPS process, we, there's four really ways to incorporate a due diligence process into your IPS. So you can take your, your active investments, for example, and you can use the FI360 score to properly score those in terms of what's, what's on or off watch. Um, you also could institute a different criteria for passive funds. So if you'd like to use tracking error or information ratio or expense ratio or whatever screens you come up with, you could put those into your IPS uh, and use that uh, in addition to what you're already doing for the, for the active funds. And we also do allow that configuration for target date funds and money markets as well, if you have different criteria that you'd like to use. Let's, let's talk about maybe a more sophisticated advisor that's out there that might look at this from a retirement plan perspective and think that maybe it appears to be simple or, or cookie cutter, if you will, you know, sure. these, these scores and these, these rankings. I'm, I'm learning there's some flexibility here too, right? I know they can't change the, the score itself, but there are some parameters within it that they can customize, right? That's right. So you, you have essentially the FI360 score, um, just like you think of a Morningstar rating. So it, it is a data point. It's, it's Morningstar? proprietary I've, to us. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, that score is proprietary to us. And you can use that score or the averages that, that we calculate kind of as is. 
and a, a lot of our advisors use that in whole or they use that in conjunction with some other data points. So for instance, you could use our, our scoring methodology and then maybe you really want to look at 10 year return and you care a lot about uh, information ratio, for instance. Okay. You can add those on as additional screens to determine whether a, a fund is, is on or off watch. So you kind of augment our score with that. Um, the, the other alternative is if you really don't want our scoring methodology, which, which some percentage of our audience does because they, they want to create their own custom screen, they don't really want the FI360 score necessarily on their reporting. Um, in that case, you can really start from scratch, put in whatever factors you, you care about, whatever thresholds you care about, and that can be set up to monitor your funds. So you're not, uh, you're not forced into the FI360 score if you don't want to be. So there you go. Nice. There's some flexibility to it. Sounds, it sounds like. Very good. That's a cool little recap. We know we, people's attention spans out there are short. I don't want to keep them watching us too long. So sure. tell us, where can they find you? Where can they learn more about FI360? Where do they go to check this stuff out? Sure. Yeah, easiest place is just uh, FI360.com. And from there, you can... Uh, and that's for the editor. <laughs> How yeah. do you spell no. FI360? <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance. To close this out, you decide where FI360.com is going to go. Go okay. ahead, put it on the screen. Make it a rainbow. Rainbow? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right it's got to be well, the other way. Now it's backwards, oh, though. Awesome. There, there you go. go. It's right over your head. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks for tuning in. We are the Retireholics, and we are Cheers. doing what? Shameless product reviews? One beer at a time. Shameless infomercials. This is one beer at a time. We're, we're brand ambassadors. We're fun, right? Damn right. Brand yeah. ambassadors. Proud Ooh, that is brand sexy. ambassadors of FI360. Check it out. Cheers. See you next time. I don't know how we got that far.